Today marks the longest lunar eclipse of the 21st century, one hour and 42 minutes. At its peak, the moon will turn completely red, known as a blood moon. The eclipse will not be visible here in North America, sorry, but it will be highly visible in other parts of the globe, including in South Africa, where CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata is standing by at the Johannesburg Planetarium. Hi, Deborah. Hi there, Tanya. Well, a lot of excitement and enthusiasm in South Africa. Africa as a continent being one of the best viewing sites for tonight's total lunar eclipse. And I'm joined tonight by Kobe van Zale, who is an astronomer here at the Johannesburg Planetarium. Kobe, maybe you can just explain again what is this lunar eclipse all about as that moon passes through the Earth's atmosphere. What can we expect to see and why is this different from the supermoon that we saw at the beginning of the year when it appeared as if the moon was much bigger? Well, the moon is actually at its furthest point from Earth tonight. Um, it is full moon and it's known as a micro moon. So it's much smaller than the ones we much saw smaller. before. The moon on average is about 360 to, 300, uh, to 405,000 uh, kilometers away from Earth. Tonight it actually will reach the 405,000 kilometer point. Uh, together with that, the sun is also the furthest away, um, or the Earth is the furthest away from the sun in its orbit around the sun. So that's why it's going to take so long. And that is exactly why we actually will have the longest lunar eclipse in the 21st century. Um, this is a total eclipse of 6 hours and 14 minutes with totality of 103 minutes, 1 hour 43 minutes. Mm. So effectively, um, you and I will never see an eclipse like this again. You're saying it's not going to happen for, what, over another 100 years? We will see totality eclips eclipses happening again, but nothing this long. This is the longest for the next 100 odd years, yes. And what else is exciting about this? Other things that could happen tonight as well? Well. We have the Perseverance um, meteor shower happening, so when the moon moves into totality... When it's totally black. Totally black, which is in, to in local time about 21 minutes past 10, um, you could actually see a shooting star or two. Well, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. We also have Mars in closest approach. Uh, it is extremely bright. It's about seven degrees away from the moon at the moment. Um, when you look up at the moon tonight, you will see that orangey blob next to the moon. That would be Mars. Okay. Other than for the sandstorm that took place on Mars over the last couple of weeks, we should have been able tonight to see a lot of detail on there. The sand is subsiding from the atmosphere of Mars, and it will also become a very, very interesting object to be viewing. Now, the big excitement is the blood moon, as people are calling it, which I know is not a scientific term, it's kind of a colloquial one, but it is what's so exciting. What gives the moon its red color? And is it affected by things like pollution and debris? Uh, yes and no. Basically what happens is Earth has got an atmosphere around it and when light hits an atmosphere it, it, it acts like a lens and your shorter wavelengths of light will scatter away. So your blues and your greens will actually scatter away and your red light will travel through the atmosphere, come out on the other side and be slightly bent like you would bend light through a prism. And that red light, the longer wavelength light, is the only light escaping the um, shadow and then falling onto the moon. And that's why you'll actually see that the moon progressively gets darker, with its darkest point just after 10, 20 minutes past 10 odd, um, because that will be more or less in the center of the cone of the shadow cast by the Earth with the sun on the opposite side. Now we know in modern times we're able to predict with precision when a lunar eclipse is going to take place, but it wasn't always the case in ancient times. In fact, a blood moon was often a sign that perhaps there could be calamity, some of the myths surrounding this event. That's correct. Um, Eclipses in, 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 in general, uh, solar eclipses, the lunar eclipse, um, in olden days they saw this as a bad omen, they saw that uh, there's drought coming for seven years and all kinds of things, um, but today we know it's merely the way that the moon and the earth and the sun orbits around each other and every now and again um, we actually hit a point where they get into each other's ways. Mm. Uh, this year we would actually see a, totality, a total of five eclipses. Uh, two lunar eclipses, one happened in January and tonight is the second. And we also had three partial solar eclipses during this year. We can now predict that the next lunar eclipse totality that we'll see in southern Africa would only happen in 2025. 
even though there's another lunar eclipse uh, visible from the northern American area in January of 2019. It will not be visible from us. Now, there's a lot of extreme weather happening around the world. You know, you spoke about in the olden times, it was a predictor of drought. Extreme weather in the UK, for example, um, heat waves, um, wildfires in Athens, and then flash floods, and elsewhere around the globe right now. Does this eclipse affect the weather in any way? No, it's mere coincidence. It is purely the objects in the sky following their age-old paths, and yes, it happens that every now and then they cross paths and we see eclipses, but it does not influence any happenings on the Earth. So no, uh, the blood moon myths, they are only myths. Well, there you have it, Tanya. Um, no bad omens tonight, just a lot of excitement from here in Johannesburg, South Africa. Deborah Pada, thank you so much.